Hey, welcome to House Groups. Uh, I'm so thankful that you have chosen to be here tonight. Uh, I don't know what kind of week you've had, whether this week has been one of the greatest weeks that you've ever experienced or, or whether, quite frankly, as you were uh, coming over tonight, all you could think was, I would rather be uh, almost anywhere but, but here. Um, but I just want to say thanks. I want to say thanks for being in community. I believe that we are better together. And whether this has been the best week or whether, quite frankly, this has been a challenging day, my guess is that you will find others in your group that are experiencing like feelings. And so uh, it's one of the things that I love about Imagine, a uh, commitment to authenticity, uh, a commitment to being an imperfect church and being able to uh, not be okay sometimes and to have others who come around and help us uh, as we gather together, uh, encourage us in those moments of, of, of challenge and difficulty. Uh, and I'm also excited because I believe that life is better when we do it together. Uh, I need to coin that. That was good. Life is better when we do it together. Uh, uh, 10 out of 10 for me, but uh, thank you for choosing to be here. And uh, uh, this last week, we continued on week three of a series entitled The Last Arrow. And, and all throughout this series, we've been exploring this idea or concept that at the end of our life, that it won't be measured by success or failure that we've experienced, but but by moments that we look back on and that we regret, opportunities that were in front of us that we let pass us by, relationships that we gave up on so quickly. And the whole goal for this series has been that at the end of our life, we will have done everything with the life that we have been entrusted. And so this last week, as we were continuing on looking at the story of Elisha, a kind of our, our big idea is that uh, if we want to reach the end of our life and have no regrets, then we need to purpose that we are going to refuse to stay behind. That we're going to purpose in our hearts to refuse to stay behind. And there's this fascinating story in scripture. Uh, it's the story of when Elijah gets taken up to heaven, which by the way, uh, doesn't get as much publicity as it probably should have. What an amazing a miracle that God did going up to heaven in a chariot of fire. That had to be uh, an unbelievable experience. But but this story that we looked at this last week was um, the journey that Elisha took with Elijah. Uh, he knew, by the way, Scripture records, it's found in 2 Kings chapter 2, that uh, he knew, Scripture records, that, that Elijah was about to be taken up to heaven. And so they make multiple stops on this journey. They stop at Gilgal, uh, they stop at Bethel, uh, they stop at Jericho, they stop at the Jordan River. And one of the things that I love about Elisha's character is that on every stop, he had opportunities to quit the journey. That he had opportunities to stay behind. In fact, Elijah seemed to be encouraging Elisha to do exactly that. But Elisha refuses. That he has purposed in his heart that he is not going to stay behind. But that he is going to journey with Elijah literally until the very end. And no one would have faulted Elisha if he had quit the journey early. And nobody would have thought any less of him but but he decided that he was going to be intentional in moving forward. I think there's something that we can learn about that. I believe that our best life, that where uh, or the best life that we can lead, uh, is that when we refuse to stay behind, that we will experience a life of purpose. When we refuse to stay behind, we will experience a life of purpose. And one of the things that I love most about this story is that in every single stop, Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho, the Jordan, there's multiple other people that are there, but they don't take those extra steps or go that extra mile. I think there's something to be learned about the fact that Elisha refused to stay behind, that he began to discover his purpose, but it was only when he chose to walk in every single footstep that Elijah took until there was none left to follow. I think that is exactly what God calls us to. We are called to follow and to obey a life of movement in our relationship with him. 
The problem is that we want to experience God in all of the real and mighty and tangible ways, but most of us want to do it when we can quit at Gilgal or take a nap at Bethel or put our feet up in Jericho. It becomes a lot more challenging and a lot more difficult when we have to follow God until there are literally no more footsteps left to follow. Because challenge and difficulty comes our way. There's moments where we just don't feel like following after God. But if we are going to live our best life, that we need to purpose in our hearts, that number one, we are going to choose to engage, to refuse to stay behind. And when we refuse to engage, or refuse to stay behind, when we choose to engage, then and only then will we experience a life of purpose. Um, I said this yesterday, but more often than not, our journey in our relationship with God is going to require us to travel further than we ever expect. It's going to call us to have a faith and a trust in Him that we wouldn't experience if we chose to stop early. But I want to live a life of purpose. I want to live a life of no regrets. And our best life is going to be realized when you and I choose to intentionally engage and when we refuse to stay behind. And so I wonder, and my hope is, is that you spend some time in discussion tonight in your groups. Where in your heart do you need to determine that you need to refuse to stay behind? Where is it that you need to get into the game? Where is it that you need to intentionally decide that you're no longer going to stop too early, but you're going to follow God until there are literally no more footsteps left to follow? I thank you for being willing to engage again in community. And my hope and prayer is that we are better together and that your discussion challenges not only you, but the people that are around you. And let's believe and continue to trust that God does immeasurably more.